Well, it turns out the universe is like those thousand-piece puzzles. It has a missing piece, too. And while well, you gotta look somewhere behind the couch for a puzzle piece, the universe's lost chunk might be right above us, in the Earth's atmosphere. There are hints that it contains something scientists have been trying to find for years – dark matter. Now, Dark matter is an invisible type of matter. It plays a huge role in creating our world. Like sticky glue, it helps entire galaxies come together, grow into enormous cosmic structures, and rotate. Unfortunately, it's impossible for us to study it properly because we haven't managed to detect it yet. But recently, a new idea appeared that might help us finally catch this secret Pokémon. What if we were trying to detect it the wrong way? Usually, astronomers imagine dark matter is something made up of massive particles. But now they think that it might be made of tiny, light particles, possibly even a million times more delicate than the lightest particles we know. In that case, it could flow through the world like cosmic waves, and this gives an idea of how to spot them. Scientists want to try using Earth's ionosphere, the upper layer of our atmosphere that's packed with charged particles. That's where all of our beautiful auroras come from. The charged particles light up when the sun particles touch them. They figure that it might interact with these particles, emitting radio waves, finally letting us know that we're not crazy and it's really out there. Here's how it would work. If their idea is true, then the dark matter is kind of like an invisible ocean. It's ultralight, basically weightless, and it's gently sloshing around the universe. So it should occasionally pass through our planet as well. We just don't notice it. The waves travel through the Earth's ionosphere with all its charged particles. And if at that moment their vibrations line up, it creates resonance. This resonance makes their interactions even stronger and stronger, kind of like pushing someone on a swing makes them go higher. In this way, their interaction would finally become strong enough for us to notice and detect. For the first time, we might be able to detect electromagnetic radio waves sent by dark matter. All that's left for us to do is to catch this with super powerful antennas. The ionosphere is our best friend that has always helped us catch tons of other radio waves. So let's hope it works this time. The reason why dark matter is invisible to us is that it doesn't emit, absorb, or reflect light. Regular matter, all the things that surround us, absorbs some light waves and reflect others, which makes us see them in different colors. But dark matter particles don't do that, so we have no idea what this substance looks like. And as we mentioned, it's probably super light. So because of this, it interacts very weakly, if at all, with normal matter. It could pass right through you and your walls, and nothing would happen. No friction, no heat generation, no sound. We can't even catch the particles bumping into each other or interacting in other ways. So telescopes can't catch it. Detection tools that rely on radiation fail as well. It's invisible to electromagnetic detection, including infrared, ultraviolet, X-rays. So, how in the world do we even know that it's there? Well, it's all because of mass and gravity. So first of all, our galaxies wouldn't exist at all without it. We know that the gravity of different objects can hold them together. But when scientists study galactic clusters and summed up all the objects in them, they realize that something doesn't add up. All the visible mass in galaxies, like stars and gas, wasn't enough to keep these clusters bound together. They move so quickly that they should fly apart. Next, they started to look at how galaxies rotate. Again, they noticed something strange, that the outer parts of galaxies rotate almost as fast as the inner parts. Imagine the runner tracks. We know that guys on the outer track should run faster to catch up with those who are closer to the center. People around the center go a shorter distance and run faster. Our galaxies form spirals, so it should be logical that stars and planets move faster near the center, right? But they don't. For some reason, they move almost at the same speed. Something must be pushing the outer parts to move. Then we noticed gravitational lensing. When light travels around huge and massive objects, it gets bent for some reason. But it shouldn't do that. Even though these objects are massive, are they really massive enough to bend light? All these things hint at one. There must be some invisible type of matter that adds to the weight and gravity of our universe. 
This invisible extra mass helped clusters of galaxies to form and distribute across space in certain patterns. Alternate explanations just don't work. When scientists create timeline simulations of the universe after the Big Bang, things only line up after adding this invisible matter to the equation. So they called it the dark matter, and then realized that this invisible part makes up about 85% of the mass of our world. That means that for about every 2 pounds of regular matter, there are 11 pounds of dark matter. Wow, try not to think of the ramifications of that the next time you step on the scale. <laughs> but what exactly makes up dark matter? That's an interesting question, which is why I said it. At first, scientists were looking for things called WIMPs. No, not that kind of WIMPs. I mean weakly interacting massive particles. These aren't actually confirmed particles. It's just something that scientists made up to potentially explain dark matter. At first, they thought that they should be heavier than regular particles, which makes sense because it should add extra weight, right? Having mass would make them exert a gravitational force. Their interactions would still be very weak, as their name suggests, but still. They also thought that WIMPs were probably produced in just the right quantities during the Big Bang. So they tried to detect them bumping into regular matter, often placing the detectors incredibly deep underground so that those annoying cosmic rays don't mess things up. But after 40 years of research, they found nothing. And that's when they realized that dark matter particles are probably not heavier but the other way around, much lighter than any other. Also, now they think that dark matter might consist not of one type, but many types of particles, just like our regular world. For example, light and ultralight dark matter. So all this gave them yet another crazy idea – exotic black holes. Imagine that right after the Big Bang, the universe might have created a gazillion tiny black holes with unique properties. The regular ones are born when massive stars come to the end of their lives and collapse in on themselves. When they do that, they create a super dense region, an unbelievably strong gravity pocket. You can kind of picture it like throwing a very heavy and small ball on a super elastic stretchy fabric. So it's not really a hole, it's more like a very deep pit. If anything comes close to this place, it instantly falls in there, and climbing back is hard. Not even light can run away from there, which is why they look pitch black. But that requires stars. However, our exotic primordial black holes were born way before the stars. They were created in the first quintillionth of a second after the Big Bang. They've measured this? They'd be much smaller than all the ones we know today, and they would spread all across the universe instantly. It'd still be crazy dense, though, having the mass of an asteroid in a space as small as an atom. So Stephen Hawking thought, could these guys have created dark matter? Basically, these supercharged black holes were born at the same time as our universe, created a new form of matter, dark matter, and then evaporated right away. Pretty insane, huh? And even though these short-lived black holes might not exist today, we could still detect their effects on cosmic history. In any case, that's just another mystery for scientists to solve. Let's hope that all these new theories will help them finally confirm that dark matter actually exists. Does it matter? Yeah. That's it for today. So hey, if you pacified your curiosity, then give the video a like and share it with your friends. Or if you want more, just click on these videos and stay on the bright side.